we know you have to leave to catch a flight pretty yeah. soon. So can you tell me a little bit about your first impression of the script when you got it? Um, I personally loved the script. Uh, I read it. Uh, my mom was like, hey, read this script. You have an audition. You have an audition. And I was like, okay. Read the script. I was like, mom, this is a brilliant script. I really want to be a part of this project. Um, and originally I was reading for the role of Etta, which was played by Kara Hayward. But um, then they brought me back again and I read for Natalia. And... I guess both Noah and Ben really liked me more as Natalia than Etta, so um, yeah, I, I love the script. I love how it came together as well, so. How about for you personally? Is it really tough getting really into a certain role and preparing to audition for something and then having to switch gears and readjust? Um, not really, because there, there is a little bit of myself in Natalia, as there is in every character that anyone plays, but uh, so it was kind of easy to get into her character because I could see where she was coming from and, you know, have having read the whole script, I really understood her situation. And, um, of course, asking for notes from Noah and stuff like that when I was in the audition and ha having him give me notes on, hey, can you do it this way? Or, hey, can you go in more this direction? And also on set, you know, can, can, you, can you say it this way? Maybe we can try this. So it was really not only just me shaping the character, but also um, with help from Noah, you know, really guiding me in one, one place. Was there a lot of mixing and matching in the audition process? You mean uh, somebody coming in for one part? Yeah. And there were two, um, uh, as Morgan mentioned, she came in for Etta originally, and there's another character in the movie who came in San, out of a San Francisco casting that ended up in a different part, who's one of my favorite pieces of the movie. Um, but that was really the extent of it. But it's, mm -hmm. you know, we auditioned so many people in their age group that it was really fascinating to see who comes in and picture them in a different part, especially with Natalia and Etta, since they're such different types. And how is it for you, from what you first imagined when you wrote the script to what you ended up getting in the final cut of the film? Are they completely different characters, or do they stay uh, true to the script? You know, I've been living with uh, these guys and with the edit for so long that it's, I really can't separate <laughs> them from their characters. I am so happy with who ended up in this movie. I feel really proud of their performances, and I think it's you know a movie that is very specific in its tone. And the people in it, I feel, all like really um, exceeded my expectations of creating that. And I imagine you guys didn't get to shoot in order, right? Uh, we did not. We sh actually we did shoot the beginning of the movie first. We we shot locations, but the movie was structured that it really takes place in one house and then moves to a different house. And so we were kind of, at least in terms of its acts, uh, in somewhat sequentially. How is it for you tracking the relationship with his character? Because it does change a lot throughout the film. So if you're not shooting in order, is that something you need to remind yourself of before you jump into a yeah. scene? Yeah, I, I would have to read and be like, okay, where is this in the script? How does Natalia feel about Clark? What is Natalia, you know, doing in that whole situation? Um, it's it's not as hard as it seems because like, you just get okay, where is the sides in the script? Um, and. It was easy to sort of shift gears between, okay, this is my first time meeting Clark, I really like him, I really want to be with him all the time, and, you know, towards the end of our relationship where it's like, eh. <laughs> I don't really like you all that much anymore. It is a really unique dynamic. Can you connect to that at all? Because on the one hand, he's very abrasive, and I can understand why people shy away from him, but at the same time, there's definitely a charm to it as well. Well, I have a friend that's a lot like Clark, so that's why I can kind of really... I do, I do. I do. <laughs> Are you going to tell like this it. friend that? Um, <laughs> probably not. It's there. They will be. Um, they will remain nameless. But um, yeah. So it was. It was kind of uh, easy for me to relate to Clark's character. In fact, if Clark was a real person, I would be friends with Clark. Um, considering I already have friends that are <laughs> like him. But uh, it's. I mean, it's not that hard for Natalia to relate to him because she's. She's got her own issues and she's dealing with them in her own way. And so she kind of feels for him. But I don't really think she likes the way he's handling it. What kind of prep work did you guys do before jumping into scenes like that? Uh, prep work? Um, yeah, just before before getting into exploring the relationship on set. Did you guys kind of get together and talk it through at all? Yeah, so I came about a week early um, before we actually started shooting, and that gave us an ample amount of time to sort of collaborate together and to figure things out. Um, it was definitely, I have to say, it was something that wasn't entirely premeditated. It was definitely yeah. a dynamic that we uh, we found on set. Yeah, because I mean, we, we ended up being, we're still really good friends. So I mean, like, immediately you know, we got along, and, yeah. and that was the good part. <laughs> and the yeah. thing about all of the people in the movie, especially um, Morgan and Ben and Kara, as they showed up knowing their line Stone Cold, which as a director is... Uh, something that seems like it would be a granted, but it's right. like, uh, yeah. every day you're relieved when your actors show up 
knowing their lines. Yeah. Keep it in the script. Yeah. <laughs> and these guys were she so knows. good. I imagine you had a pretty tight schedule too. Yeah. All right. I think you gotta you gotta go. But yeah. thank you. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I have a safe trip. Bye. 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 Stay fine. Um, we had a we didn't have an insanely short schedule. We had thirty days to shoot, um, and. Uh, we did have eight hour days mostly because we had two 14 year olds at the center of the movie and Ben who was 16 so when it was just Ben we would have I think actually eight hours with you or ten hours with you and yeah it was 17 we had like yeah ten hours I think I think so, eight or ten yeah. hours and maybe six hours with the 14 year olds uh, so it was they were really hard days it's a lot of dialogue um, and yeah it was a, you know tricky to pull off all of that dialogue in the day's work. Well, one of the things I appreciate most about the movie is that you made a movie about teenagers and they're actually teenagers. Yeah. But was there ever a point where you had to consider, you know, maybe we should cast older actors just to give us more uh, leeway? You know, there was moments on, on set where I was like, this would be a lot easier if I had 16 hour days. <laughs> um, but like a, the, the magic of working with these guys and making this movie and some of the reason I wanted to make it this way is I kept seeing these movies with teenagers and there are some good movies, but it, I felt a little cheated when I would look look it up or hear that these people were much older. And, you know, in, in preparing to talk about this movie, being able to defer to Ben and Morgan, and, you know, people ask me, like, what's this movie about? And I start to talk about, like, the experience of being a teenager. And on set, to be able to turn to them and say, well, like, you guys tell me what it's like to be a teenager, because I'm, like, nostalgic for it, I have memories of it. And uh, that was hugely important for them to be able to bring that to it, because I didn't, I never wanted it to be um, like a pedantic or moralizing movie where I was like telling you what teenage life was like, and that was a huge risk as you know somebody who's not a teenager anymore. And so casting these guys, I, I couldn't have made it any other way. I don't think. You grew up in San Francisco, right? I did. Yeah, so my writing partner and I, Ben Tarnoff, both went to high school together. Actually, did any of this grow from experiences you guys had way back when? Yeah, definitely. Um, we went to the same high school, which was like a major pressure cooker, and. It was an environment where um, students and teachers and parents are all kind of like going at each other and it's a battle of wits and ambition and it's just a really intense time where you have all these generations in contact, which never doesn't, you know, since then I haven't had close quarters with that many different age groups. Um, and we wanted to write a movie about that. And then the more personal stuff that's like the more... I think the questions that are more like, is it autobiographical? I think that stuff, sadly, I didn't even realize how personal it was until I was in the edit. Um, and maybe that was like, I just wanted to, I you know, wanted to write this movie and make it work as a story. And so I, in the edit, then I was like, wow, well, that's all very personal and uh, relatable for me. When did you start writing this? Did you workshop it at all in school? Um, I did. I brought a version of it to Malia Scotch Marmo's class, actually, and got some feedback. And as you know, <laughs> as well as I do, it can be really daunting to get 12 people's um, feedback on a work in progress. I think now that the movie's out there, I can like hear um, you know, people like it or dislike it and take that in stride because it's finished. Um, but I was cautious about who I showed it to and who I could listen to while it was a work in progress. Is there anything that was really important for you to stay true to, even though maybe some people were like, you know, don't do that? Yeah, a lot of things since that version did change. I think what I sensed was working early on was there was something very specific tonally that made people intrigued and uncomfortable and uh, not to not know exactly how to feel. And that was something that, that kind of energized me while writing it. And. Uh, and that was something I kind of committed to earlier, even as plot points or, or characters changed. So you have a finished script. How do you go about getting the green light to actually get it made? Did yeah. the success of Little Dad <laughs> pave the way the, at all? Yeah, I was here at this festival in 2012 or 13 with Little Dad. And um, that, was a, that was a really amazing experience and a huge vote of confidence. And I think in addition to introducing me to some of the people who ended up helping me make Little Dad, gave me the confidence to just go to get ready to make work that would be shown. Um, and so that short helped a lot and introduced me to a bunch of people, including the casting director, who um, you know, I think gave our movie a lot of credibility in terms of getting some of the adult actors. And also, I trusted him so much to get uh, the right kids for the movie, because it's really the hardest. It's bit. funny, you're on both ends of the spectrum here. You need fresh talent yeah. to play the kids, but at the same time, you kind of need that credibility in order to get into festivals like yeah. this. Yeah, exactly. And so the adults in the movie um, really, I think, do such an amazing job populating the world around Clark and making it feel like Clark is in a real universe.
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So what was the uh, environment on set like? Were we talking a big company or um, small, short schedule? It wasn't tiny. San Francisco is a pretty, it's a small place, so you can't, it's not like New York where you can like kind of hide as a, as a big, small movie or a small, big movie with everyone. I mean, not, we weren't big by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it felt really intimate. Uh, it's such a, it's a movie about relationships and and it felt like the and the ones we had on set were a lot healthier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were a lot healthier, but it yeah. was very intimate. We were, a lot of it, we were mostly in houses, and so when you spend ten days in a house, you get really intimate with everyone in there, and it kind of feels starts to feel like the family. Yeah, I mean, just that they were practical, real locations too, and they weren't. It wasn't set stuff, which yeah. is really, really helpful. Yeah, this budget, you can't really, you can't build a set, and so the location scouting was huge, huge part of the process. And I was from San Francisco. So I kind of knew where to look, and my good friend Wyatt Angelo, who actually produced Little Dad, which I was here with and was a producer on Quitters, uh, we lived together in San Francisco while making this, and we would just spend a ton of time going uh, house to house looking for the right location, because uh, we knew that was the only way to get the production value that we needed. What was your experience like coming out from, I guess you could call it the Columbia umbrella, and making the move from shorts to features, because obviously they trained us very well, but yeah. at the same time, you know, you know, like you're saying with locations, you don't have access to the specific Columbia locations yeah. you would have way back in the day. Or yeah. even like the way the uh, the New York City's mayor mayor's office works. Yeah. Is that completely different for you now? Um, it was, I took so much from that program. I had such a good time there and the people that I met there, um, like you and Kevin McMullen and Fernando and Christoph, and there are all these like amazing people who popped up and would check in on me and ask how it was going or I would send a scene. And uh, I'm so grateful for that experience. From a filmmaking standpoint, I, I can't imagine having done this without the chance to have made these shorts. And it's like, you know, Columbia's like a little microcosm of what it's like to go out into the world. And if you can like withstand Andy Beanan looking at your short film and pointing out the problems, then you're like ready for anyone else to. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I mean the location thing was easier in a way in San Francisco. I feel like in New York, people are a little bit hardened to the idea of letting you come into their house with a camera crew. In San Francisco, I'm not sure I could do it a second time. At first, they were like, yeah, come on in and make a movie. And by day six, they were like, don't ever come back here. Did to anyone totally freak out? Uh, on location, our hosts were really, were really great. And really, um, you know, San Francisco is a tricky city uh, and can be an uptight city at times. And uh, we definitely, that would come into play. But at the end of the day, the, our you know, our, the places we got where we were really lucky and the look was so perfect that we really kind of fought to make sure we could work in those spaces. Going back to the story a little bit, I think what we get in the movie in terms of just exposition and background on the characters is exactly what we need, but when you get really into characters, you start to wonder, what was life like for these people X amount of years ago? Did yeah. you guys ever discuss what he was dealing with before the start of the movie? I think we did talk a little bit of background. Um, there was some context, yeah. Yeah, and we talked about Clark's history and kind of Ben brought a ton to it. Ben showed up and you know was telling me what books he was reading and what books I imagined Clark would be reading. And in the in the movie, there's references to the kind of classes they're taking uh, and what they're studying. And I think that gave a lot of background and suggested a lot of like what he had studied up until that point. It's weird. I'm just realizing now. I actually read Crime and Punishment right before we came and I know in, in the yeah. classroom scene he talks about Raskolnikov. Yeah. So it, just things lined up naturally like that. Um, um, and then I think with with the other characters around Ben they brought a ton. You know there was this really nice dynamic that Mira and Greg could talk to Ben the way they would talk to their own. They have kids who are... Also in terms of advice just listening to them and, and how supporting and, and helpful they were in terms of just acting. Yeah. Apart from being mothers and mother and father figures, yeah. is there any advice that they gave you that you might take with you on to next film? Uh, take it easy. <laughs> I think that was probably it. I mean, I, knowing when to be lighthearted and when not to be. Um, so yeah, but they're all they're yeah. I think yeah, that's probably was the main piece of advice. Was this your first feature? Um, no. Uh, no. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I was in a movie called The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey when I was really little. Sounds like a very different movie. Yes. <laughs> it was cool. It had a cool cast. It was with Tom Berenger and yeah. Jolly Richardson. Um, and then I hadn't done anything for a while until I did Quitters. Yeah, so this, but this was really my, my first big role. Yeah. 
what was your experience like stepping on set? I imagine you were thrilled to get the role, but you know, you get get on the set, you're the lead of a big feature film. I mean, yeah, Is it freaking? Totally. Yeah. I mean, it, it felt like a lot of responsibility, um, but just uh, the comfort that I felt with everybody else totally alleviated that. Um, and it was just an opportunity to spend a lot of time doing one thing, just doing like for a long time. So I thought I really got to just think a lot and be over analytical sometimes. And so yeah, but it, I, I mean, I felt like it was it felt like it was a, le a healthy learning experience for for all of us. Yeah, and this was my first feature, so I was kind of learning right alongside them. How was your experience taking it from script to production and then to post? Because I imagine, like you actually said it before, at a point you kind of can't step back and watch it as any audience yeah, viewer might. So yeah, I mean, I had to sit through the screening yesterday, and that was a very, um, you know, strange experience, but also a huge relief to see it finally out in the world and on a screen with a real audience. Um, the, you know, now in hindsight, it feels like kind of a seamless process of there's the script and then you audition these people. Um, I think in reality it's like a different, it becomes a different movie, you know, as we learn. It becomes a different movie every step of the process. And that was, there were definitely growing pains in there. And with the editor, you know, she would sometimes send me out of the edit for, for 24 hours to say I'm just going to try a version and if you're here, you know, so there was definitely um, push and pull and I was really lucky to have such a great casting director and a cinematographer and an editor um, because those are really like the painful things to see it become real and it's either what you imagined or not as good as you imagined or better than you imagined and I think each of those people really exceeded my expectations and that was really I think the, I give a lot of credit to those people for helping realize this movie and transition through those phases. Did you mainly keep the post-production process to your team or was there any uh screenings, test screenings? We had te we had three, two or three test screenings um, and those were really helpful to see what was working, what wasn't working and there were some major edits and shuffling that went on after some of those screenings. The hardest thing was just nailing the tone because I think it's a specific movie and so when something's off it feels really off uh, and so e the trickiest part was how do you ease into that, especially since I'm a first time filmmaker, so how do you introduce an audience to that world? Um, and that was what the test screenings were most helpful for, to figure out how to bring an audience in.